Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Tata Katu, Yako Rayurangi Tira Ma, Tina Koto, Ina Iwe Huhu Nai, Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Katu. It's a huge pleasure to be here this afternoon. I understand I have controls, so I'm going to keep moving um, and catch us up some time as we go along. So I want to talk to you about the importance of data. Um, you've heard, just heard that it is not, um, it is not uh, the, um, uh, it, it, absolutely everything we're after, it is in fact a means to an end, and that end is improving lives. Um, so, yeah? Um, when you think about Statistics New Zealand, you will often think about us as being a provider of data, and we are. We are the trusted guardian of much of Aotearoa's most important data. We supply statistics, data, insights to people across Aotearoa um, to help you and others make informed decisions. My role's independent. Um, it's free from political interference, um, which means that I can deliver statistics and main maintain confidentiality of the data that's supplied um, to Statistics New Zealand and provide that to others. But we're more than just numbers. Um, behind every data point is a person, um, a community, uh, a hapu and iwi, um, and our focus is on, on supporting those communities to take that data and information, combine it with their own knowledge, and to help change lives. We know that data is valuable and that it helps uh, put the pieces of the puzzle together to understand those stories of success that the Minister was just talking about. But it is about a strengths-based approach to prove what's working and where more investment and support is needed. And we also know that funders like to see evidence um, and that data can provide the proof needed to show where that investment is needed. Uh, a role that you probably don't know as much about in terms of Stats New Zealand is that we've recently taken on a formal system leadership role across government. And the focus of that is to grow data expertise across government, but also to make sure that the data that we're collecting and that we're using actually does help um, in terms of the, the challenges that are facing us as a society. And this is a real, really important opportunity to uh, build better quality data for whānau, for hapu and for iwi. We have some challenges. We know that the data quality is variable and we know that uh, across government agencies, analytical capacity needs to be grown. But we want to develop a system that can, can support you in what you're seeking to do. Uh, one of the things we've done to help us in these challenges is to partner with Māori, um, with key stakeholders, with holders and users. Some of those are in this room uh, right now in partnership pilot projects. Um, to explore how the data can offer insights. Um, for example, um, in terms of capability building, which is core to what we do, um, we've been working with Titihi uh, to uh, design, build and implement a multi-dimensional wellbeing survey of the whānau that they're working with. And Felicity from Titihi has been spending some time with STATS um, to learn from us, and we've been learning a huge amount from her and from Titihi and how they work. Um, in understanding how to support uh, an organisation that's working at pace at grassroots. We've also been working with iwi uh, to populate their own outcomes measurement frameworks with a strong focus on a strengths-based analysis. Um, and as you will have seen in the frameworks from the presentations earlier, these have a potential for far-reaching application. But the aim of all these projects is for Fano, hapu and iwi to not only use to the data to tell their own stories, but to inform the decisions that you will need to make to enable success and well-being. One of the tools that we have available to you and which um, I know Andrew is going to speak to you about next is Te Kupinga. Um, in 2013 we carried out Te Kupinga, which was our first survey of Māori well-being. Um, it was collected on a wide range of topics. Uh, and um, basically the first release of it was in, in uh, from Te Kupinga 2013, provides overview statistics on four areas of Māori cultural wellbeing, including Wairuamatanga, Tikanga, Te Reo Māori and Whanaunatanga. Uh, it's been very successful to date and Andrew will be telling you a bit more about that um, shortly. 
Now we're going to be repeating this survey in 2018. Um, it is a post-sensual survey, so we draw the survey sample from the census. We're increasing the sample size from 5,500 to 8,000, um, and we've listened to the feedback from our stakeholders. There'll be additional questions about the environment, more questions on te reo, and uh, particularly around the acquisition of um, te reo Māori. One thing we do need from you, though, is to be champions for the survey along with the census um, to improve the response rate. Because the, more, uh, the higher the response rate, the more we can actually tell you about yourselves and that you can use um, to generate uh, improved outcomes. Which brings me to the census. It is in fact a, um, as I said, it's a, it's a post sensible survey. We draw the sample from the census. And next year is census year. Um, and the focus of next year's census will be on improving response rates for Māori. Um, the higher the census response rate, the more likelihood we can produce valuable insights and data quality from Te Kupinga. Um, we're aiming for a 70% 70 uh, 70 of the country to take part online, and this is a new approach for us. Um, we're testing it now in Whanganui. Uh, Whanganui is our, um, has been selected to be our test site for our, our census test. And in fact, tomorrow night is census night in Whanganui. Um, and uh, over the last fortnight, we've sent, hand-delivered, um, around 19,000 access codes to households in Whanganui. We've picked Whanganui because by testing in one city, we can work out how our processes are working in reality and how we can scale them to the whole country next year. In particular, we're trying a new community-led engagement strategy for the census. Um, we've had declining response rates from several groups in our population over um, the last few years, and we want to reverse that. We want the communities we need to improve participation rates for, that's Māori, young people who are of working age, people with cultural and linguistic barriers, for example, to help us determine how they want to be, to be engaged with. Um, and uh, one of the ways we're engaging is yesterday we were at the Rutherford Junior High School, over the weekend, the Rutherford Junior High School Fair. Um, uh, as you, if people who come from Whanganui um, will know that Gonville and Castle Cliffs are the feeder schools into that, um, into that uh, junior high school. And here are some of the people who were at the fair. Um, we had a number of different things going on there, including we approached the school and said, what do you need, what do you need? And they said, uh, well, it would be great to have something, some support around the hangi. Um, so we put up some tents for people to eat the food in. Um, and, at the, um, uh, and we supplied tablets and pamphlets there um, for people to use. Um, we also um, set up a, um, a stall where people were guessing the number of chickens in the, in the um, Honganui area and had a rubber chicken throwing competition. Um, and actually the gift card there that those two 16 year olds are holding up, um, uh, they won, they, they guessed the right number of chickens in Honganui. Um, I now want to talk to you about a, um, uh, and I will say, I've got a, I've got a, a, um, a video at the very end of this, uh, which is um, promoting the census but using the Ratana rugby. Um, it's a small video, it's had 20,000 views in Honganui. Um, if I've got time to show it to you, I'll show it to you, otherwise we might slip it up later. So, um, the integrated data infrastructure is um, a particularly powerful tool that I want to tell you about. Now, um, what, what it effectively means, the integrated data infrastructure, is it brings together data from all government departments at the individual level, it combines it with our person-centred survey data um, and uh, some of the 20, uh, 2013 census data. It brings it in, it links it together, um, and it then goes through a, a step where it, um, we, we de-identify that data. I'm going to go through the steps that we go through um, in, a, in a couple of seconds to make sure that this data is safe. Because as you can see, when you think about the fact that it's got data about student loans, education, tax, benefits, families and households, health and safety, justice, travel and migration, this is incredibly powerful data 
And what's so powerful about it is that for the first time it actually gives you the chance to treat somebody as a whole human being, to think about them holistically and the way in which they interact with government holistically and the outcomes holistically. So you can look at patterns because this is about groups, not individuals. Um, and you can look at the, ex the um, impact of life experience on life outcomes. Now, this is very, very important when it comes to something like Whana Ora um, uh, and a number of the other programs that uh, exist um, across New Zealand because it allows you to actually look at the outcomes that you're achieving. So, um, I'll just tell you about the, um, the way that we keep things safe and then I'm going to come back to telling you about just how powerful this data is. The, um, the, the integrated data, as I said, um, brings together uh, individual um, level data from across government, our surveys, some of our surveys and uh, the 2013 census. It brings it in, it, uh, de it links it together and then it de-identifies it. That means we take out names, addresses and day of birth. Um, and then we keep it very, very safe. So here's the five safes approach that we take um, to ensure that we provide access only if these conditions are met. First thing, for people to access the data, they have to be assessed as being safe. That means that they have the right bona fides, so they know how to use this data. They're, they're experienced people and they know how to use it. The second um, safe is that the projects need to be safe. That means they have to be in the public interest. They have to be something that's actually going to make a difference for us as Aotearoa. The third is that the settings have to be safe. So you can only access this data through um, a remote, remote access from a data lab, we call them, um, which basically means a locked room um, with a standalone PC in it not, uh, that is not ex um, linked to a system um, so that you can only access the data that we allow you to get access to. Um, the, um, the fourth is the safe data. I've already told you that it's, it's de-identified within the, within the lab um, so that you can't see who, uh, who the people are. But we also... Um, we also go to the trouble of treating this effectively like a safe um, in a bank vault, where we say, um, uh, you can only get access to these locked compartments, you can't get access to the, the whole. It all depends on the research that you're doing. And finally, that the outputs, are, the outputs are safe. That means that before the data comes out of the data lab, we confidentialise it to make sure you can't tell, um, you can't identify individuals or businesses. Now, the benefits of this is that, as I said, you can actually have a look at the impacts of life experience on life outcomes. So, for example, um, a particular uh, evaluation that has been done using this type of data um, was looking at teen parent units in schools. Um, uh, for those of you who knows, know about these, these are, these are units where um, schools are uh, provide um, wraparound support services and sometimes on, uh, access to on-site childcare. Ordinarily you would have to look at um, using uh, randomised control trials, really um, gold standard stuff, to see whether you could look at the impact of these programmes um, from an outcome perspective to prove to your funder that it was actually making a difference. When you can use the IDI you can actually find you take the outcomes from the program and you compare them with a group in the IDI that look like these individuals. And that helps you to actually test whether you're actually getting an, out an outcome or not. Um, the outcome from that particular piece of research showed that we were making a difference. Well, that particular program was making a difference. Um, before I finish up, I want to move on to talking about um, another piece of work that we've been doing over the last while. Um, the, um, this is the work on the iwi statistical standard. Um, this week begins the, uh, sees the beginning of the consultation process to seek feedback on the updated standard. And um, for those of you who aren't aware, the standard guides how to collect, 
organise and describe iwi information, and it's used to produce iwi statistics. Um, I'm really um, very appreciative of the support that we've had um, on this mahi from a, a group, um, many of whom are in this room today, um, including those from Te Mana Rauranga, um, to really help us uh, develop this and to work with iwi around the country. Um, the changes to the standard aim to ensure that it remains relevant and that it collects contemporary data needs for and about iwi. Um, and the updated standard uh, will be uh, guide groups seeking to be added onto the iwi classification which will be used by Stats New Zealand in the 2018 census. Now I'm really very positive about the constructive, and by constructive I mean challenging, conversations we've had with Fano, Hapu and Iwi. Um, we're making good progress uh, across many areas, but there is more work to do. Um, we know that data quality across government is variable and that there are some gaps and we want to work with you to address these. We know that the quality and reliability of data help, helps Fano, Hapu and Iwi understand their communities and build on their successes. And we know that this information is infinitely more powerful if we put it in your hands for you to use to shape the futures of your communities. Um, so with that, Motato a mona uri a muri ake nei. The whole reason for our data is for us and our, for our children after us. Um, and I know that is the purpose of Fano Ora. Um, so from me, uh, I think I, I don't have enough time to show you the video, but Namihi um, Mahana, and thank you for your time. Namihi Mahana, kia koutou katoa. We have a long history within the local Wanganui club rugby scene. The best part is you get everybody around here. It was still a win for us, the community coming together. You think we won even though we lost. It's a proud history. It stems from our grandfathers and our forefathers and uh, we continue that legacy within our younger generations who are wearing the jersey. Okay, listen for the whistle, boys. Listen for the whistle. For me, uh, there's nothing better than coming home, sitting in the pouring rain, supporting our boys on the field. It's about showing we've got the numbers. If we can say we've got a lot of young guys around, then we can push for some more funding. If they don't know you're there, it's hard to get funding for what you want to do, like play the game. Ratana is awesome to be with and to be at and to be in. Hey, partners. Yes. We are Ratana! Want to see more funding for sports in Whanganui? You need to let them know you're there. Do your bit and complete the census test on or before 4 April 2017. Find out more at census.govt.nz and let's find out. To make it.